Hey everyone, this is PhD sports scientist Dr. Will O'Connor and you're listening to the Running with Dr. Will podcast. The show for runners who want to get faster using the latest in running science and technology. Running is going through a huge boom right now and more runners than ever are looking to take their running to the next level. In the show, I break down the science and the tech so you can run faster for less effort. Let's go. Does your maximum heart rate influence your running performance? The short answer is no. Cardiac output matters. So your, your maximum heart rate actually has a higher chance of decreasing as you get fitter. So I'll explain why. But what we need to, the, the real takeaway here is that absolute numbers mean nothing, relative numbers mean everything. So remember that. All right. So first, a a recap of some important terms around our heart rate or our kind of cardiac physiology. So heart rate, that's the number of beats per minute, BPM. That's what our watch reports. Then we also have stroke volume in liters. So that's the volume of blood our heart pumps each beat. Makes sense, right? Stroke volume. So it's how much blood our heart pumps per beat. In liters. Then cardiac output is liters per minute. So the amount of blood we pump per minute. So cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. So how many beats of the heart we have each minute and how much blood is being pumped each beat gives us the cardiac output. All right, so the blood carries oxygen and fuel to the working muscles and removes carbon dioxide and other waste products. So at rest, our need for this process is low, you know. We're not doing much, so our muscles are are relatively dormant. They're not off. Um, The physiological system is never off and on, but it's the demands is low. So our oxygen demand is low, uh, so our heart rate is really low uh, because... We don't really need a lot of oxygen. We don't have a lot of uh, byproducts that we need to excrete. Um, So, yeah, we have a low heart rate. As we start to increase our muscular exertion, so as we start to run, you know, we got off the couch, we decide to go for a run, the demand for blood dramatically increases. So we can't increase our stroke volume that's relatively fixed in terms of we can't just drastically increase the amount of blood we pump per beat we can't go from pumping one liter to pumping four liters uh, because our our hearts aren't that plastic so instead we increase our heart rate so as we increase our heart rate you know let's say it was 50 beats a minute and it was you know one liter of blood per per beat. Well, that's a cardiac output of 50 liters a minute. Now we start running and we go up to the, well, we start walking. I'm going to give myself a little easier maths here. We start walking. Someone could uh, reference this as, yeah, that's appropriate numbers. Uh, 100 beats per minute when we start walking uh, down the street to get uh, before we start getting into our jog. So we're still at one liter a minute, right? But now we're at 100 beats per minute, so we're at 100 liters per minute. That's our cardiac output. So you can see our stroke volume stayed at one liter, but our heart rate increased to increase our cardiac output so that we can uh, distribute more oxygen and fuel to the working muscles more quickly. We've doubled it. Okay, We've gone from 50 liters a minute at 50 beats to 100 liters a minute at 100 beats. Like, yeah, that all that all makes sense. So what we've done in the past is gone, well, heart rate really works as a great proxy for objectively measuring exercise intensity and prescribing training. Because as our working muscles, as we start to do more, our heart rate increases to match the supply and demand. So if we work harder and harder, our heart rate goes up and up and up. So we go, cool, now we can utilize heart rate as a means to to monitor training intensity. And through the development of wrist-based heart rate monitors, 
you know, we've got the, um, everyone's pretty much nowadays has a built-in uh, LEDs in the back of their watch that, that measure heart rate um, via, uh, I can't remember, it is spectrometry. Um, so this has led this kind of increased popularity in heart rate monitoring and the, um, I guess, less than accurate means of monitoring heart rate through uh, wrist-based heart rate monitors has led to some dubious experts touting some bro science uh, around heart rate and fitness. So despite the uh, you know huge advantages of heart rate over earlier training metrics, such as like perceived exertion and um, just like time to complete, heart rate's not the perfect tool. Um, and so one of the numbers that I see getting thrown around is maximum heart rate, heart rate max. And some of these dubious experts in bro science say, the higher your heart rate max, the better runner you are, or the better you are at pushing yourself. And these statements are 100% wrong. They're not backed up by science whatsoever. They're just a theory that kind of sounds right. So what happens with heart rate max is that it changes with your training. It can also change with your age. So some of the proposed mechanisms for the way your heart rate max changes um, with your aerobic training is both autonomic, so that's like the extrinsic factors such as plasma volume expansion, you know, things we don't have a control of. Um, so there are a lot of factors internally that we, we're not in control of that are altering the way um, our heart beats when we exercise. And what uh, Zavosky in 2012 kind of stated in his research was that your heart rate max with aerobic training can be altered by 3 to 7%. So that's up or down, and that is with training and detraining. So detraining meaning, you know, when you have a rest, if you're injured, uh, your heart rate max can actually increase by up to 7%. Likewise, when you uh, start undergoing aerobic training, your heart rate max can decrease by 7% or 3%, or not at all for some people. So what uh, Zavosky concluded was, however, because of the lack of research in the area of training on heart rate max, the reader should remain speculative and allow for cautious interpretation until further more investigations are carried out as to the confirmation of the mechanisms involved. <clears throat> as scientists, we typically say something like that when we're like, yeah, I have really no idea what's going on here. The data is so noisy that we can't really interpret anything per se. Like, there are going to be some people whose heart rate max increases with training and some who decrease. Same with age. So. I guess what we can look at when we're comparing heart rates is what's the difference between low and high heart rates and why does it or does it not matter? So I'd like to give an example of uh, a professional world-class triathlete, one of the best long-distance triathletes in the world, Lionel Sanders. Some of you may have heard of him, the Colonel. Uh, he's got an awesome YouTube channel. I recommend checking it out. So his maximum heart rate is around 165 beats per minute, which I would consider extremely low for a professional triathlete. Now, a lot of people say that, well, he's not just, you know, it's because he's so fit, right? But I'll give some, some data to try and explain what is happening. So how is it that a professional triathlete who can have an FTP over 400 watts and a 5K PB of under 14 minutes have a heart rate max of 165. Like, that just doesn't even make sense. How can you run under 15, 14 minutes for 5K and, and have a heart rate max of 165? Well, the answer is cardiac output. Remember that? I said that at the top of the show. Cardiac output refers to the amount of blood being pumped per beat of the heart. So cardiac output is affected by stroke volume, the amount of blood per beat, and the number of beats, heart rate. So just because your heart rate is low doesn't mean you're always you 
you're not pumping as much blood or oxygen compared to if your heart rate was high. So what is super important is like the oxygen cost for most people of running a three minute K or a five minute mile is pretty much the same because once you start to be able to run those kind of speeds, you all have a relatively similar running economy. So we can kind of say that that's constant and everyone's more or less ways around the similar. And so you can say, well, the oxygen cost of me and Lionel running three minute Ks is about the same. So what's my maximum heart rate? 202 beats per minute. What's Lionel's? 65, almost a 40 beat different. And we're running around the same. <clears throat> my PB is just over 15 minutes for 5K. So while he's a lot faster than me, we're still working <clears throat> at really high work rates. And it's not explaining why my heart's beating, you know, can beat 40 times per minute faster than his when he's a better athlete than me. Well, cardiac output. So what's happening here is that Lionel's cardiac output is still going to be higher than mine because his stroke volume is most probably, well, it has to be way larger than mine. What does that mean? It means per beat of the heart, he's going to be beating something like four liters. So he's going to have a larger plasma volume and he's going to have a larger heart. And so at 165 beats a minute, and each beat is beating, is pushing, pumping four liters of blood, he's gonna, his cardiac output's gonna be 660 liters per minute. Me, I have a maximum heart rate of 202 beats per minute, and I'd have to assume that my stroke volume is around three liters. So each beat of the heart, I'm beating three liters of blood. My cardiac output is 606 litres a minute. So at 4 litres and a maximum heart rate of 165, Lionel's pumping out a cardiac output of 660 litres a minute. At 202 beats, almost 40 beats high, more, and a 3 litre stroke volume, my cardiac output is 606. So almost 60 liters per minute less is my ability to distribute and transport fuel and oxygen and remove byproducts. So Lionel can have a way lower heart rate at all points. I mean, how can we, I guess, use this information? You know, how could this help me? So it's what I said at the show, absolute numbers mean nothing. Relative numbers mean everything. So always use a percentage heart rate number. So as an example, if Lionel was running, Lionel and I are both running at 80% of our heart rate max. He'll be at 132 beats and I'll be at 162. We'll both be running at the same intensity because we're both using a relative number. We're both using 80% of our max heart rate, not someone else's. If Lionel ran at 80% of my maximum heart rate, he would be running at 162 beats, which is pretty much his max. And if I ran at 80% of Lionel's max heart rate, I'd be at 132, you know, and I'd be jogging. So next time you're on Strava and you're comparing your runs or just at the end of the run, you've got your watches up, you know, you're looking through your watch data, you go, oh, yeah, what was your average heart rate? It was 160, what was yours? Oh, I was 140. It's important to look at the relative number. The relative number is the most important number because it is going to give you a relative comparable number that you can use within your training just personally, and then you can compare it to someone else to ensure that you know, you're training it at similar intensities when you go for a run or someone's at a similar fitness level. And so... What you need to do is, yeah, you can find your max heart rate, but the actual number doesn't really mean much. It's that what percentages of that you want to operate at in terms of setting your training zones and also then uh, implementing your training and, and pacing and racing strategies 
Uh, so I've a few episodes on uh, training zones and thresholds and things. So make sure you check those out. And if you need help setting your zones and everything, jump in uh, to the links in the description or on my Instagram. Uh, there's a link in my bio on my website at drwilloconnor.com. Uh, I have all these resources that can help you. And of course, get into the Reignite Your Running course because that'll set you up with everything you could need across a six-month program. I'm in there. I'm helping you get better. And it's just like an end-to-end, A to Z program designed to help you smash your next PB. So make sure you check that out. All right, guys, until next time, happy running. Hey teams, thanks for listening. If you're looking to get more tips, tricks and advice from me, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Dr. Will O'Connor and share, like, review, give some stars for the episode. It really helps me get the word out and I hugely appreciate it. If you do so, give me a tag on Instagram. I'll be sure to share your stories and reach out via the DMs. All right, until next time guys, have a good one.